Alright, hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to build the best nuclear reactor that I have ever seen. I'm always working on different designs and I think this is the most perfect design that there can be. So, let's get to building it. And we will do this in steps. So step one, let's just build the actual reactor. Now get rid of this crafting table. I have to use crafting table for some reason to access the search bar. Alright, so now you need first reactor chambers, nuclear reactor, obviously. So, I'll place it like right here, where there's a random dirt block for some reason, set for us. You build the standard reactor, you surround it in reactor chambers. Why did I put this crafting table so far away? I'm so stupid. Okay. Now, next step, now that we have the reactor built, is to build, put a lever on it. Because we don't want this thing suddenly turning on and blowing everyone up. So, alright, got our lever, and the thing will be turned off the entire time. Even though we're not filling it if with uranium yet, so don't need to worry about that. Alright, now let's build the outputs. So, you want two HV transformers. Why? Because one HV transformer is not enough to take out all the outputted energy from this thing. You need two, because this thing outputs 2400 EU per tick. So, and also you need some cable, so let's just use some glass fiber cable. Now let's put the output on this side, so what you gotta do is you have to have the HV transformer three holes be facing the reactor, so you gotta do it kinda like this. It's really difficult to do, I guess. And ha. Alright. Now that that's done, let's just Combine the cable, and now we have our output. Now, next step, very important, is another safety precaution, which is called the thermal monitor. And we also need to read our wire. If I'm going too fast for you, you can pause and replay things, okay? Stop complaining. Alright. You want to place your thermal monitor here. I set the temperature to 3000, that's just preference. It can't be anything under 1000, otherwise the thing will constantly just turn on and off. So, now that that is set up, let's build the cooling system, which is with the force fields mod, which is already a part of TechIt, so you don't need to worry about downloading things. Most people don't know about this setup, which is why I am showing you this and this awesome reactor. Otherwise, people will probably know a lot, very much, how to make this reactor. Alright, now you want to place a reactor containment field projector on top of the reactor. Put that on it, of course. I think that's for being able to turn on and off. But, first of all, this thing is not going to activate until we have a frequency card. It needs to be linked to a generator. So, let's make the force field core. So we need a force field core, and we need a force field EU injector. If you've seen my force field tutorial video, you would know how to probably do this. So, as usual, you set the force field core, and then you want to put a lever. Hold on, let's access my inventory, get some levers, and put a lever on this. But this thing doesn't... Oh! Okay, you put a lever on. Huh? Okay, it's just bugging out right now. It's on. Okay. So, this thing needs power. So let's get a just a medium voltage solar panel. Because these things, uh, the reactor containment fuel projectors, they barely use any energy. It's really surprising. It's only like 0.1 EU per tick. So, now this thing should be being powered. Yep. Alright, now let's get a MFFS frequency card. MFFF. Did I say three Fs? Oh well. MFFS frequency card. Stick it in here, real quick. Okay. Now we got our frequency card. You know, we stick it in here, and now this thing is linked to the generator. So there's also a reactor water cool option, where when the force field is turned on, there's like water around it, but the water really just doesn't do much cooling at all, so it's really not too worth it. So, this is more of a preference choice. I don't, I don't really care for it. It's ugly after all the wiring is set up, so I'm going to turn that off. So now we got this force field thing that keeps the things, the reactor safe. Now, 
One thing you might notice is that this breaks your lever, which can be a problem, obviously. So what you're going to need to do is pretty much get a block and duh, and you want to use red alloy wire. This is more safer, I guess. So yeah. So now when you turn this force field on, red alloy, red alloy wire just does not get destroyed, so now we can keep the reactor turned off this way. Alright, so now we have our cooling system set up. Well, we don't have our cooling system set up. Now that's our next step. So, next step is let's build the reactor cooling system. So, you want to place two of these MFF S reactor heat control units on whichever side you want, really, but you need two of these, because one is not enough to cool the reactor, obviously. Just one is not enough to cool the reactor. This reactor is really hot. And actually, let's build it up. Okay, we have to build it on this side, never mind. So we build it on this side, and now this is where equivalent exchange has to come in. I hate using equivalent exchange, but it has to happen for this reactor. So, most importantly, we need the energy condenser. And yeah, let's just clear our inventory a little bit here. I shall keep the stone. We need an energy condenser. We need pneumatic tubes. Pneumatic tubes are very important. Everything's important. Mark, th mark three collectors. And... Oh yeah. And we need a filter. And... Yes, there is another thing. We need a uh, timer. This is pretty advanced, but the amount of output you get if the reactor is worth it. So let's just flatten this out a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Now you, you just want to place a condenser here. And that condenser is too close. Okay, place a condenser here. You need to have a filter facing the condenser, so you gotta put it backwards like that, like the HV transformer. Um, and then you have pneumatic tubes going into the reactor heat control units. But most importantly, you do not want these going into the actual reactor. So make sure that it doesn't connect to the actual reactor. And only to the heat control units. So, let's place a timer on this. And I would set it to about 0 0.500, that's what I used to use. Now you, now you need this condenser producing ice. So, let's go over here and get some ice. Okay, we got our ice. Now, we also need the thing producing ice. So, let's just use three collectors for now. It's probably already enough. You don't need that many collectors, probably. But, as you see, this thing will smartly fill the MFS S heat controls with ice. See, this thing's already filling with ice. Now, now, the reason I don't use... I originally used an energy link, which used, like... 400 EU, 360 EU or something. Now, that was really inefficient as it didn't even output as much ice as these filters do. So that's why I switched to filters and it's really worth it. Also, ice would be spattering all over the place when I used waterproof pipe, I mean item pipes, so yeah. Alright, this video is already getting long, so let's finish up this reactor. So, we got our cooling, check. We got our safety measures, check. We can turn off, turn on and off the reactor, check. We can turn on this force field unit so nothing goes haywire, check. Okay, so now let's turn on this reactor, but first we need to fill it with uranium. So, let's do that. So, let's just make this very quick. Try and clear out my inventory just a little bit. Okay. Let's fill this thing. I don't know of a quick way to fill things, so this is what I'm going to be doing. Okay, one more. And as you notice, I'm fully filling the reactor of uranium, which is how we get our 2400 EU per tick output. Okay, reactor's full. 
Let's turn on our force field units, because this thing would not cool if the force field is not on, so make sure that thing is on. Now, oh yeah, before we turn this thing on, it's also having an MF MFSU. And da da. Okay, so now power will go somewhere. Let's turn this thing on. Okay, reactor's on. And it's overheating for some reason. Because. Oh! I forgot one thing. And that's why we have those safety countermeasures. Because we didn't set these to cooler mode. So make sure that your MFFS heat controller things are set to core mode. And target heat is zero. And now when I turn on this force field and those things are in the cool, this thing like mad, and we can activate the reactor now. Now the reactor is outputting, and look at this amount of energy. Let's show you how much energy we're actually getting. To prove my point. So, let's get our EU reader, and let's read this. Okay, so we're getting the approximate output of 2400. It's kind of doesn't give you a direct answer, but this is 2400. Also, if you're really worried about this thing being completely self-powered, what you can do is set some fiber cable. And you can have this fiber cable go and power your force field. So yeah, obviously you will want your force field a little closer, so yeah, now this thing is being powered by your own reactor. And once that thing is full, this thing will barely use much energy and your MFSU will fill up a lot faster. So, here's your fine power machine. You can test with the amount of collectors you need to keep the thing cool. And that's pretty much it. And like and subscribe if you like this tutorial. See you next time.